And the Republican who, who thinks he's going to take over as speaker. I'm just saying that's his opinion. He's entitled to his opinion. That's, but, but, but when he was asked about this, he dismissed those jobs as government jobs that weren't worth saving. And House Republican Leader John Boehner joins us now. Thank you, sir, for coming in this morning. You seem to be the president's new punching bag. Well, George, I think it just shows uh, how out of uh, touch the White House is. You know, the American people are asking the question, where are the jobs? Uh, and yet here's the White House uh, worrying about what I've got to say uh, instead of working together to get our economy going again and to get jobs back in America. Well, the president is also outlining proposals that Republicans have supported in the past. This permanent extension of the research and development tax credit, this expensing uh, proposal, the small business tax cut of about $100 billion. Uh, those are proposals Republicans have supported in the past. Will you support them now? Uh, George, I'm open uh, to the president's ideas. But I think the president's missing the bigger point here. And that is, with all the spending in Washington and all the uncertainty facing small businesses, including uh, the coming tax hikes on January the 1st, uh, until this uncertainty and spending is under control, uh, I don't think uh, these are going to have much impact. And so today, what I'd like to do uh, is to work on a bipartisan basis to do two things. First, instead of waiting until after the election uh, to uh, put together some big omnibus spending bill uh, with, a, with a bunch of wasteful spending, why wouldn't we do this? Why don't we pass a bill this month at 2008 spending levels, you know, before the TARP, before the bailouts, before the stimulus, uh, and let's put some certainty in the economy. It, that in and of itself would save about $100 billion this year alone. And then secondly, uh, why wouldn't we work together uh, to make it clear that all current tax rates uh, will be extended for the next two years? So you're open uh, what to that will do, what, what that will do is help small businesses who have no clue what the coming tax rates are going to be, uh, gives them some certainty. And if we're able to do this uh, together, I think we'll show the American people that we understand what's going on in the country and uh, we'll be able to get our economy moving again and get jobs growing in America. So you're open to the president's ideas. You're also making these two proposals of your own for the president. You talked about that two-year extension of the Bush tax cuts. As you know, the president is ex against right now the extension for the wealthy. But his former budget director, Peter Orzag, made a similar proposal about this two-year extension. But he said, but they have to expire after two years so we can reduce the deficit. Are you open to that part of it as well? George, we, we can't uh, deal with the deficit. Uh, until we're willing to get our arms around spending and have a strong economy. And you can't have a strong economy if you're raising taxes on the very people uh, that you, you expect to invest in our economy and uh, to begin hiring people again. Mr. Mr. Leader, how, how confident are you that you're going to be Speaker of the House next year? Well, certainly, George, uh, it's possible. Uh, we've got uh, a steep hill to climb. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, but when I uh, travel the country and I travel my district, I've never seen the American people more engaged uh, in this election and any election in my lifetime. Uh, and so we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, that's our goal, though, to earn back the majority so that we can renew our efforts uh, to drive for a smaller, less costly, and more accountable government in Washington, D.C. If you win, you will be third in line uh, for the White House, and obviously the eyes of the world will be on you. I wanted you to weigh in on, on an issue with national security implications as well. We've seen this Pastor Terry Jones down in Florida threatening to burn the Koran. Uh, this weekend, General Petraeus has spoken out against it. Secretary of State Clinton has spoken out against it. What is your message for Pastor Jones? Well, to Pastor Jones and those who want to build the mosque, just because you have a right to do something in America does not mean it is the right thing to do. Uh, we're a nation of uh, religious freedom. We're also a nation of tolerance. Uh, and I think uh, in the name of tolerance, uh, people ought to really think about uh, the kind of actions they're taking. So you're telling him not to do it? Sir, you're telling him not to do it? Well, listen, I, I just think that uh, it's not wise uh, to do this uh, in the face of what our country really represents and over some, you know, 234 years. Okay, before you go, I, 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 I have to note uh, that if, if you do win and you do become speaker, you will probably have the deepest tan of any speaker uh, in American history. And there's actually been a, a poll out in your state of Ohio saying 30% of the voters think you spend too much time on your tan and 27% don't like it. 
Is this something you have to overcome? Well, they probably weren't there yesterday when I was out cutting my grass <laughs> uh, or when I was out riding my mountain bike, all right? <laughs> so no worries there? Thanks, George. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lee.